This next talk is actually pretty amazing uh, because the person who's giving it is someone I met when I was 15 years old. In one of our first conversations, um, we had that normal, awkward 10th grade banter, you know, like, where do you live? What are you having for lunch? What does your dad do? To which Keech answered, oh, my dad makes Vagisil. What does your dad do? <laughs> same thing, Keech, same thing. <laughs> um, my dad didn't do that. I had no idea what he did. Um, Funnily enough, Keech went on to t when, uh, took over her family's business, and I went into women's health. So if you had to describe our friendship and our careers in one word, that word would be vagina. Yeah. Woo. So buckle in, because you're, spoiler alert, you're going to hear that word like 52 more times, I'm guessing, so get comfortable. Um, but seriously, through Keech's leadership, Vagisil is changing the way we talk about vaginal health. And they are creating innovative project, products that are, quite frankly, kind of vagical. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming my good friend and a magician of sorts, Keech Combs Shetty. Blogger 17. My name is Keech Kom Shetty. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I hope you've had your coffee or your rosé or whatever it is you need in the morning because I am here to emancipate a word that is rarely spoken. A word so offensive that it is rarely even spoken on network TV. I am here to free the word vagina. Now, I come from a long line of vagina pioneers. <laughs> my grandparents, Ivan and Mary Elizabeth, invented Vagisil. In fact, it was my grandmother who insisted on vag in the name, to be explicit. Because if vag is not in the name, it is not the same. So their first hurdle was to convince the FDA that vaginal itch was a real human condition. Picture this. My grandfather tes testifying in front of an all-male committee, and they accuse him of making up the concept of vaginal itch. His response? Go ask your wives, go ask your moms, go ask your daughters, go ask your sisters if vaginal itch is real or made up, and then get back to me. So I'm going to share some V facts with you today, some vagina facts in the hopes that you will join me in my quest to emancipate the vagina through openness and information. First B fact, did you know that vaginal itch is more common than the common hold? 23 times more common. And yet we still don't talk about it, it's still taboo in many circles. Now, I come from a heritage of vagisil and vagina, and I am damn proud of that. But as you can imagine, it was not always the way. Growing up with vagisil in my family business, not super cool, a little awkward. And that's me with the curtain dress in the middle. I thought I was super fancy. Yeah. Over the years, I have learned to appreciate the positive impact that our products have had on millions of women around the world. Today, I am CEO of Comb Incorporated, the makers of Vagisil, amongst many other brands. But I am most proud of all of the work that we do for Vagisil. <laughs> My passion and my mission in life is to make vaginal health approachable and accessible to every vagina on the planet. This mission is inspired by over a decade of research that I've done all over the world. And I gotta tell you, every time I'm in a new country, the local researcher, usually a man, will pull me aside and say, Keech, listen, don't be too upset if you don't hear what you wanna hear with your research because our women, they're different. They don't talk about these things. They're too modest. 
They're too embarrassed. Yeah, right, we are all the same. Give me five minutes and you cannot get them to stop talking. We should probably be serving cocktails at these things. So I used to work at Estee Lauder. And at Lauder, I would see women taking care of part of their bodies that were far less sensitive and far less important without shame or even second thought. So I started to think to myself, maybe I can use my experience with skincare in order to help people get past the shame and embarrassment of vaginal health. Because the simple truth is that your vagina is like the, the rest of your body. It is just more sensitive and more delicate skin than the skin on the rest of your body. If you guys knew what I knew, you would treat your vaginas differently. <laughs> Instead of paying attention to her when she's screaming for help. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I am going to guess that all of you use a special kind of wash for your hair, shampoo, right? And probably another one for your face and mouth toothpaste. And yet, you use the same wash on your elbow as you do on your vagina. Think about that. Your most delicate, intimate skin. The fact is, your vagina has an acidic pH level. It's actually between 3.5 and 4.5. Think acid rain, almost grapefruit juice. That's how acidic it is. And that is important because it protects you from the pathogens and the infections and the imba imbalances of bad bacteria. So when you use a regular body wash or um, an antibacterial wash or even a sensitive wash, those washes have a pH level that is more neutral, basic, or alkaline. When you use these washes, you are killing the good bacteria in your vagina. You are weakening your vagina's natural defenses. Here's another big fact that most women don't talk about and most women don't know about. Dryness starts much earlier than menopause. In fact, it starts in your 20s. It is not just an old lady issue. It is brought on by things like hormonal imbalances, dehydration, alcohol, birth control, antihistamines, stress. Does this sound like college to anybody else? Did you know that 75% of women are concerned about vaginal dryness? Yet when was the last time you actually talked to your girlfriends or a doctor or really anyone about this? The V fact is that the skin on your vulva vaginal area is just, as, uh, just like the rest of your body, it is just more sensitive. So chances are if you feel dry on your face or your legs, your vagina is probably feeling pretty dry too. A few years ago, I set out on a mission to find a solution for vaginal dryness from a woman's perspective, from my perspective. So we developed a formula that is long-lasting, mimics your own natural moisture. You apply it ahead of time so that you're not interrupting the moment and no one is the wiser. You apply it internally and it stays put because that is where you need it, so you won't need to wear a panty liner while you're out on your date. And it also has high-end anti-aging uh, ingredients like hyaluronic acid, the same stuff that you get in those expensive anti-aging creams from places like Estee Lauder. It is simple. If you moisturize on a regular basis, you avoid dryness in the first place, just like you do your face and the rest of your body. Oh, this is important. This formula also does not include any perfumes, preservatives, dyes, or estrogen because I am the most allergic person that you will ever meet in your life. I am totally serious here. I am highly sensitive to the most common preservatives, to colors, to all sorts of other ingredients. So I am literally the guinea pig for every product that we make. If, if I can't use it, we don't make it, we don't sell it, you won't see it. <laughs> So this formula, it, it's no miracle, it just feels like one. And it's called Vagisil Pro Hydrate Moisturizing Gel, and you all have a sample of it in your bags. And trust me, you will understand exactly what I'm talking about the first time you use it. <laughs> so show of hands, 
if I can see. How many of you guys knew these VFACs that I was just talking about? Yeah, from what I can tell, it's like 10 people out there. <sighs> My fellow vagina owners. I don't want to say ladies because I want to include every and any vagina on the planet. We have got to elevate the importance of vaginal health because we need to be in sync with our vaginas. If we can't talk about it, we can't take care of it. The embarrassment and the shame that women have about their vaginas is directly correlated to the lack of education. And if you can't talk about it, you don't learn about it. If you don't learn about it, then how the hell are you supposed to take care of it? Culturally, we have been preconditioned to not talk about our vaginas. There are over 200 words to use as substitutes, nicknames, for the word vagina. 200 ways to avoid using one word, vagina. And I am here today to ask for your help to start the conversation, to evolve the narrative, to put an end to the intimidation and the shame and to get the recognition, the respect, and the health care that every vagina deserves. The answer is simple. We need to emancipate vaginas starting with the word. Now, I know that here at Blog Her 17, you all are probably thinking, we are all vagina pioneers here. I am preaching to the choir. We are all here loud and proud. But our research shows that almost half of American women are too embarrassed to hear the word vagina. 35% are too embarrassed to say it. It's almost as if every time you say vagina, an angel loses her wings. <laughs> so I'm asking you to join me on a mission that it will, it will offend some people. It'll probably shock most. But to quote Mae West, those who shock easily should be shocked more often. We need to get past this culture of shaming of the vagina. We need to be shameless about vaginal health. Think of it this way. I like to say this with a lot of mixed audiences so that they get a little bit more comfortable with the topic. We all come from one. Half of us have one. And the other half seem to spend their entire lives trying to get back into one. <laughs> so what is the big deal? The word itself makes some men uncomfortable. Vagina. My vagine is platinum. Insert the jade egg in their lady parts. Right. Her coochie crack. Precious lady? Stop looking at my vajayjay. The Batcave. Chateau Camel Toe. The Phallus Palace. Tuna Taco. Beef Curtains. Her. 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 This cannot get old. I seen some fucking Funani in my day. Your cooter. Down there, another region, private parts, <laughs> naughty bits. So that I can take a look at your pussy. Vagina, the the vagina. Sing it. The vagina, vagina. It's a weird word. I think it sounds pretty. Just say it. I dare you. I'm asking you to join me in the vagina challenge. We are going to fight the shame and the stigma around vaginal health by reclaiming the word starting here, right here, right now. 99. Nice warm up. This is great. So let me tell you about what the vagina challenge is first. So I am asking you to join me to, to create a video of yourself shouting the word vagina. 
Post it on social media using this hashtag, hashtag vagina challenge. I actually have a new Twitter handle, key, uh, at KeechCS too, so please connect me there too. Take a video of yourself and challenge three of your friends, your family members, your coworkers, your fellow vagina friends. I don't care who they are or where they are. <laughs> and we are gonna change the conversation. So to honor this vagina challenge for the first month, Bagisil is going to make a donation of $25,000 to Planned Parenthood. Because, as I said earlier, my mission in life is to bring good vaginal health to every vagina on the planet, and I cannot think of a better organization with a broader reach, reaching more vaginas to provide quality health care than Planned Parenthood. So, will you join me in this challenge? Will you make vagina history with me right here, right now? Okay, everyone stand up. Move forward. Can we get the lights? Ready? On the count of three. You got your cameras out? Everyone get your cameras out. We're going to do a selfie of it. Yeah, we are. Ready? Everyone there? Where are you? I'm, I don't know. Am okay, I here? Ready? Count it off. Ready? One, two, three. Vagina! Thank you, Blogger17. We are going to change the conversation. Thank you so much.